Hello, my name is Domi and I'm a sports coaching student. Welcome to my video series on talent in sport. In this series we will explore what is it that makes a talented athlete. This is the fifth and final video of the series and today we will discuss how relative age effect can influence the perception of talent and we will explore biobanding as an approach to counteract the relative age effect. Let's start with the definition, shall we? Reese and colleagues have defined the relative age effect as a biased distribution of athletes' birth dates, with an overrepresentation of those born in the beginning of any given year, for example September in most Western societies, and underrepresentation of those born at the end, for example August. Relative age effect is also known as RAE. It is often demonstrated in ice hockey, handball, soccer, and baseball. Recent colleagues have found that RAE is more prominent in boys than in girls and that younger athletes are more prominent in earlier rounds of drafting to the US national hockey teams. They state that any advantage associated with being born in the first two quarters of the year may disappear by the time the athletes reach elite level. And they shared the example of greater proportion of relatively younger players at later stages of sport careers. The researchers have also found that there is an uneven distribution of ages which may be caused by the athlete not choosing a particular sport. This process is known as self-restriction and is the main reason why younger athletes might drop out. This is why in recent years biobanding has been introduced. Biobanding aims to accommodate maturity associated variation amongst the youth in sport. It's an iteration of grouping young athletes into bands of groups through matching their maturity levels based on characteristics other than their chronological age, such as predicted adult height at the time of the measurements being taken. Predicted adult height is estimated based on the height of athletes' parents. But what are the effects of biobanding? It gives the younger players a better opportunity to play in an environment that they can develop their physicality in and reach their full potential without being compared to the older players. RAE might create an illusion that the oldest athletes are more talented than the others in the group, as the development has been going on for longer than their younger counterparts. And because biobanding separates the players into more equal groups, it's easier to spot which player might be special as they are compared against players with similar characteristics and maturity levels. Although biobanding creates equal opportunities for the players to develop, the young athletes might feel segregated from the friends who might be in the other bracket. Molina and colleagues have also found that early maturing players subjected to biobanding perceived the games as not physically challenging compared to the age group competitions. Though they did have to adapt their style of play to a faster game and place more emphasis on tactics and techniques. Likewise, the late maturing players felt less challenged by the games, though they enjoyed the opportunities to demonstrate and develop their technical, tactical and physical skills and often adopted the leadership and mentoring roles in the games. Biobanding is by no means a permanent solution as the athletes will grow older and mature at different rates with the youngest athletes eventually catching up to the oldest. The relative age effect disappears, which is known as the reversal effect. Biobanding attempts to put players into equal groups through an insight into the height of their parents, but it doesn't account for other factors that we discussed in the previous videos of this series. Meet Alex. She is the youngest player on her team. Her parents are quite short, but she has the talent gene, emotional intelligence, growth mindset, a sport oriented unit, and plays a multitude of sports. The coach might instinctively put Alex into the lower bracket of the group, but this will mean that her development is actually hindered, as she has been placed below her zone of proximal development, also known as ZPD. To find out more about ZPD, I encourage you to read my blog post on cognitive development theories, which I will link in the description down below. Of course, the same could happen the other way around. Meet Chelsea. She's one of the oldest and tallest players on the team, and she has very tall parents. However, she has the collagen type 5 alpha 1 gene, a fixed mindset, a slightly sport oriented unit, and only plays football. The coach might put Chelsea in the upper bracket of the team, which could potentially be dangerous as she is more likely to suffer an Achilles tendon or ACL injury if she trains too hard. And actually, it would be better and safer for Chelsea to work in the lower bracket to help her gradually increase the amount of pressure she can put on her Achilles tendon and ACL to prevent her from suffering a serious injury. In this series, we have covered a multitude of factors that might affect the emergence of talented athletes in sport. We learn about how human biology might play in the athlete's favour or have a detrimental effect on their performance. We explore the desirable psychological build-up for a successful athlete. We discussed how the athlete's environment and social circles might impact their involvement in sport, which could potentially lead to the emergence of talent. We analyzed specialization methods for young athletes. And finally, we reviewed the impact of relative age effect and biobanding. Thank you for joining me on this learning journey. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I have. Thank you for watching. Stay safe. 
Take care and goodbye.